I've watched a lot of sports in my time. Initially, it was soccer, and then kind of in my teens uh, and 20s, it was all basketball. I've seen a lot of athletes. I've seen a lot of documentaries of different players, all the greats. Um, and I can't recall a single time that I saw any of these greats talk about squatting and deadlifting as being a number one training methodology to improve their athletic performance. Not a single time have I seen a basketball player or a soccer player talk about improving their squat or deadlift to improve their running and jumping. Not a single time. Bodybuilding has been around for a very long time. Powerlifting has been around for a very long time. Information like this has been around for a very, very long time. Why do you think that is? Think about the money that's in basketball and soccer. Think about what that money can get you in terms of professional help with training. Think about the trainers involved. Think about the clubs. Think about a place like Manchester United, all the money they have. You know, think about Real Madrid. You know, they, they almost every year they buy like a record-breaking player transfer fee. They have money to, to burn. So with all those resources, you would think, you would think that they would have the best experts in the field of you know, performance, uh, training, uh, therapists, you know, trainers, coaches, all that. You know, they buy all these top players, you would think that they also have the best coaches in the game. And so, thinking about that, how come we've never seen guys being put through hardcore squatting programs during kind of the off-season, deadlift programs? You never see that. Every single video that I've seen of LeBron James training, He's standing on some freaking unstable ground, like a Bosu ball or something along those lines. He's on one foot doing a stiff-legged um, RDL, you know, deadlift, one leg. He's reaching, he's pulling, he's pushing those cables around. He's got one dumbbell over his head and he's going to a, a, a pistol squad, assisted pistol squad. He's running and jumping between cones, changing direction, he's backpedaling, changing directions, running in sand. I've never seen him work properly with a barbell. I've seen, I remember a few years ago, I saw him squat once, and it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, I never thought he would be such a poor squatter. He had very little weight on the bar. His feet were like sumo stands, and he was going like a quarter squat. And I think he got a lot, a lot of slack for that. Um, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, Ivan, you reckon, you reckon squatting is a thing? You reckon deadlifting is a thing? You reckon bench pressing overhead is a thing? I'm not an expert. LeBron James makes millions and millions, like 50, 100 million dollars a year. These clubs are so wealthy, you have to assume that they're getting the best for the athletes. And so the best of the best are not getting their athletes to do this stuff. And we can see what LeBron James can do on the court. You know, he's like 37 years old now, man. 36 years old. I think he's 36 years old. 36, 37 years old. He can still dunk, run, outperform some of these 21 year olds that are just coming out. He's a supreme athlete. Of course, he's a genetic freak, but we don't just have to isolate uh, you know, ourselves to him. Think about Ronaldo in soccer. Supreme athlete, he's now also kind of 36, 37 years old, something along those lines. Think about all these different athletes. I spoke about Zach Levine last night, being one of the most freakish athletes I've ever seen in my life. His ability to jump off one leg with like minimal knee bend, it seems and elevate like 40, 50 inches and dunk over people. It's just effortless looking. He doesn't have a squat. I don't think he's got even a deadlift. He's got a lunge. So even though while we're sitting in this kind of bodybuilding, CrossFit, powerlifting kind of circle and we just kind of consume ourselves in what pr produces the best squat and deadlift, um, you know, we're so consumed by these ideas. You know, we've got guys pulling eight, 900 pounds um, humongous weight, but you don't see these guys dunking the ball. You don't see these guys doing much athletically other than just lift the weight. So a lot of you guys in the comments have said there's a point of diminishing returns, like I mentioned in the video. And uh, one of you guys, um, actually Pink uh, Supremacy, that's his username. He said he did a, he did a thesis on this, um, the correlation between uh, squatting and athleticism and vertical leap. He basically said that there was like a uh, up to a, two times your own body weight, that's kind of like the tipping point, and after that you're kind of not getting anything out of it, potentially even regressing. Um, 
so like squatting and deadlifting is good but i think when you put it on the table amongst all the other things i think the risk to reward is not very good getting somebody a six foot eight athlete or somebody that's never squatted somebody that's just leverage wise just really bad build for squatting getting a guy like that and teaching him to open his uh, hips up achilles all that sort of stuff get everything kind of loose for him to be able to squat properly to some sort of reasonable depth uh, depth is just not worth the risk of injury squats and deadlifts you know i think i'm just speaking i'm just assuming carries a very large risk of injury and very small reward for performance We've seen these guys, and you know, in, the, in our circles, we pay these guys out. Yeah, I mean, the guy's standing on a BOSU ball doing a squat. What the hell are you doing, man? The guy's standing on a BOSU ball and doing like a single leg uh, RDL, or single leg, stiff, stick leg deadlift. Like, what, what is that? We make fun of these people. And we say the squat and deadlift is the be all and end all. Um, it's not like that. I, I, I just I think to myself, like, I'm, I'm aware that I, I'm not an expert. And I'm also aware that there are people out there who are at the perimeter of, of knowledge when it comes to physical human movement. Um, and I imagine these guys are getting employed by some of these best clubs in the world. You know, your, your Lakers, your Real Madrid's, Manchester United's. I don't see anywhere guys doing squats and deadlifts. The only place I see them is like the NFL. Like that's like an American, American thing. Only in America do you see hardcore weights being done. I understand. NFL is basically a gladiator sport. It is brutal. The more mass and, and, and strength that you have, the better you're going to go. But in sports where you are interested in running, jumping, it's not necessary. I don't think it's necessary to put somebody at risk through some of those extreme exercises like squats and deadlifts with the amount of weight that we move. You know, two times body weight squat. How long has that taken me to do? Of course, I'm not a supreme athlete. I'm just an average guy. But it's taken me a while. I don't see LeBron James doing a two, a two times body weight squat. You know, what, what, what does he weigh? Like 260, 250, you know? What's that in kilos? 120 kilos or something like this? I don't see him squatting 240 kilos anytime soon to, to ask to grass. I mean, it would be interesting as hell to, for me to see a guy like that, get a squat like that to see what the effect is going to be. But I imagine LeBron's physique would completely change if you, if you go to a 240 kilo ATG back squat at six foot eight, six foot nine. I mean, in order for you to get to that range of motion, you need thicker quads, thicker hamstrings, thicker glutes. And I don't know if that would improve him. I'm just thinking, you know, I'm just trying to think and picture that happening. Um, and, and the more I think about it, the more I kind of understand why these athletes are being put through some of these weird exercise programs where they're kind of running through hoops running cones, running backwards, change of direction, BOSU balls, and it's a lot of unilateral stuff. Um, let's face it, unilateral stuff is sport specific. It's sport specific. Um, so I think even though I'm crazy about squatting, um, I'm crazy, uh, cra crazy about what I'm doing, you need to kind of sometimes step back and then think about its context in the whole picture. Um, and this all kind of started playing up in my mind when, when, when one of you guys said to me, do you recommend me squatting every day, you know, to get better at rugby, like running, improve my, my sprint time, 40 yard dash and, and, and vertical ability for, for some of the other guys have kind of mentioned uh, to me as well. Like I play basketball, do you think I should squat every day? And I kept thinking about it in the back of my head and I kept thinking about, well, I've never seen LeBron James do it. I've never seen Kobe Bryant do it. I've never seen Michael Jordan do a single freaking squat in all of his career. Um, I, I reckon I saw Dwight Howard once do like uh, an RDL. Um, with a shrug at the top, but I just, uh, I, I don't know. The, most of the stuff that I see, you know, with powerlifting kind of movements is in an NFL. I, I don't see in any other sport, in any other sport. Um, and we can bash all these fancy exercises with the BOSU balls and whatever, all we want, but there's, uh, they're, they're producing results. They're producing results. You know, Zach Levine, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, LeBron James is kind of pushing it, but they all kind of have a, like a similar kind of build. Like they're kind of like LeBron, especially now that he's older, kind of slimmer, slimmer build. They don't have massive calves. They don't have massive hamstrings, quads. LeBron has strong glutes. Um, and I think a lot of those guys kind of have, that's kind of the area that they do kind of focus on. 
Um, but if you're interested in, in athleticism, I don't think you should be doing this stuff. Honestly, I, I just, I don't think you should do it. Um, I think you should, there's, there's a lot other better options you could be doing, which carry basically next to no risk of injury. Um, anytime you kind of spinal load, a deadlift or a squat, um, there's risk there. Whereas if you're, if I'm getting somebody to do jumping, walking lunges or l jumping lunges, what is the risk of injury there? It's nothing. It's also very sport specific because they're landing in split stances and they're building that explosiveness. The jumping of boxes, you know, all that stuff is just more specific. Um, now, if you had all the time in the world and if you think of it in a vacuum, does a bigger squat mean uh, a, a better performer? Probably, but for the amount of every, for, for each unit of time it takes you to get to a double bodyweight squat, you know, you could be spending that unit of time somewhere else and getting more for it. That's kind of what we have to think about. Um, and when you start thinking about all those things, like I've already mentioned, just think about what's happening right now in the world. What are the world best clubs in sports? What are they doing? Have you ever seen anybody do squat or deadlift? If, they, if, if you've seen them, it's like with those chick weights, the fixed weights, sort of with the barbell. It just seems like I never see them. The only sports that I, that, I, that I see this in is like rugby and NFL. I can't think of any other sport where I've seen this. I'm just thinking, like, I don't think I've ever seen it. Um, certainly, if you're interested in sprinting, oh, sprinting is another sport, maybe. You know, Ben, ben Johnson did it back in the day, and that, it's kind of been disproved and to, to kind of help anyway because it, it kind of ruins your internal hip rotation and whatnot. Um, so not even, like, you know, sprint trainers are doing this. Uh, on Instagram, I follow a couple of the kind of those sprint um, uh, pages, and I've never seen any of those guys do any of this stuff. I don't think I've ever seen any of them do it. Um, they're doing drills, like running drills, um, a lot of lunge work kind of stuff, but I haven't seen a single video come up of, of a squat or a deadlift. So I think it's important to think about that. So if you're, if you're somebody out there who's interested in this, um, I guess I've kind of finally made my mind up. Um, no, I don't think you should do squat every day if you're interested in becoming a, the best athlete or athleticism. Um, this is the other thing, you know. <laughs> Athleticism is athletics. Athletics is running, right? Doing like athletic movements in the field. You know, uh, it's not weight lifting ism. Um, somewhere along the line, we kind of lost lost track of it, but it's always kind of refreshing to see what the best are doing. Kind of like what I made a video about learning from the Chinese. Um, Look what the, the, the best are doing, and then you will kind of know in what area you should be thinking about. I've never seen these top athletes that I've mentioned already do any of, of this stuff. So, anyway. Still sick. I did 140 times one today. Um, nothing else is going on. I'm reading lots, um, researching lots about unilateral movements, um, and just thinking a lot about uh, when I come out of when I come out of um, the sickness, what I'm going to do, basically what I'm thinking now is I still believe in core. Uh, so does Real Madrid and Manchester United and LA Lakers. You know, so core is one of those things. I believe in high repetitions. Yes. But I also believe now in unilateral work. So I'm going to try and combine all of those things. Still going to squat every day. That's going to be my base. But most of my accessories are going to be unilateral stuff for high reps. So instead of me doing... Uh, you know, PM sessions, second sessions of more kind of squatting to a chair or whatever, bodyweight squatting, I might start doing Bulgarian split squats instead. So I'm excited to see that, excited to see what effect that has. Um, high reps makes me feel fantastic. Um, and I reckon unilateral high reps are going to be a game changer for me. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you in this one. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.